fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver. The Lone Ranger. <laughs> Before this exciting adventure, a word from our sponsor. General Mills, makers of Cheerios, the ready-to-eat oat cereal that gives you go power, and Wheaties, the breakfast of champions, present by special recording, The Lone Ranger. If you like to put on shows for your friends, here's a tip. Take a look at the special Wheaties, Tricks, Sugar Jets, Cheerios, and Kick cereal packages at your grocer's right now. Just turn them around, and you're looking at a magic Disneyland Park light-up. Light them up with Christmas tree lights, and they look so real, you can imagine you're seeing Disneyland Park at night. There's the rocket ship to the moon, and a special lion light-up that looks almost as real as the lions in Walt Disney's new true-life adventure Technicolor picture, The African Lion. Altogether, there are 18 different light-ups, and here's how you get them. Just look for the Mickey Mouse sign on the front of Wheaties, Cheerios, Kicks, Tricks, and Sugar Jets. The Mickey Mouse sign tells you there's a Disneyland Park light-up on the back of each package, free of extra cost. Start collecting Disneyland Park light-ups right now. Look for the Mickey Mouse sign on the front of Tricks, Sugar Jets, Kicks, Cheerios, and Wheaties. With his faithful Indian companion Tonto, the daring and resourceful mask rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoof beats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fella. I'm Silver. Gunner Mason had embarked on a life of crime at an early age. At 25, he had gained notoriety as a clever, tough outlaw leader whose fast and accurate use of a gun had given him his nickname. One morning, Gunner pulled to a stop before a house on a small cotton plantation a few miles from the town of Lime Rock, Texas. Ho, 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 boy. Easy. Hi, Sandy. Gunner Mason. I wondered where you were. I was hiding out till I grew this beard and sideburn, Sandy. When I put up the cash to buy this place and put you in charge, I knew it'd come in handy someday. Sit down, Gunner. Sure. I heard about what happened to your gang. Yeah. My first tough break. How did it happen? Last month, I got wind of a big shipment of cash being sent by stage from Lime Rock to Austin. We held up the stage, got the cash, and hid out in a shack in the foothills west of here. The sheriff moved in with a posse and took us by surprise. Didn't you have anyone on guard? Sure. We took turns. But a new man was on guard at the time. I didn't trust him too much and figured he tipped off the sheriff and let him get to the shack. He was one of the two men killed. I saw to that. <laughs> I heard you got away. Yeah, two were killed, the other three were captured. I was nicked by a bullet, but I managed to get away with the loot. The people in town have been real excited over the trial. Yeah, I reckon so. But the three men have refused to talk. I knew they would. I know I won't let them down. But the trial ended yesterday. They were all sentenced to long terms in territorial prison. I know. I've kept track of things. I found out the sheriff has taken them by stage to territorial prison tomorrow afternoon. That stage carrying those three men will follow the trail that cuts across the cotton fields of this plantation. Now, that's right. We have cotton fields on each side of the main trail. Sandy... We're going to see to it that those men are rescued. But how? The sheriff will take extra precautions on that trip, Gunner. According to what I've heard around town, he figures you might try to help him escape. Now listen, Sandy. I've been busy during the past month recruiting new men for a bigger and better gang. Before morning, there'll be six good gunmen reporting here. Now listen. 
You hire a lot of peons from across the border to pick cotton, don't you? Yeah, that's right. Well, I plan to have my new men dressed up like peons with big brimmed hats and all. They'll be in the fields on either side of the trail as cotton pickers. Yeah. Even if the sheriff sends men out ahead to see that the way is clear, my men won't be suspected. Mm, it might work at that. Sure it will. Oh, uh, what about horses? And I rode that trail a while ago. I noticed the peons you have working in those fields have their horses ground hits in the stand of trees nearby. My men will leave their horses there. Yeah, might work. <laughs> I'll put the cash shipment from the last robbery in the safe over there, Sandy. After the prisoners are freed, we'll come by, divide it, then leave the territory for a while. <laughs> And after tomorrow, the lawmen around here are going to realize they aren't smart enough to get the best of Gunner Mason. That evening, the sheriff walked the floor of his office as he spoke to a deputy. Sam, it's important that we get those three prisoners through the territorial prison tomorrow. But Gunner might get some more men and plan an ambush. Of course, the only place to worry about that would be the two-mile stretch beyond the cotton fields where the trail runs through the foothills. Once we reach the next town, five miles from here, we're safe. From then on, we cross open plains. Oh, so that's what's worrying you. Frankly, I plan to make sure there'll be no ambush. I expect a couple of hombres here to help out. Certain hombres who helped me before. They should be here by now. Good evening, Sheriff. What? Hey, a masked man and engine. Now, wait, Sam. These are the hombres I was just talking about. Meet the Lone Ranger and his friend Tom. Glad to meet you, Deputy. How? You were the Lone Ranger? That's right. I'm mighty glad to meet you. I heard a lot about you and the engine. Well, I sure feel better now that you're here, mister. It's mighty important to get those three convicted outlaws to territorial prison. Sheriff, I suggest that Toto and I leave early tomorrow and scout ahead of the stage as far as the next town. We'll get back to report just before the stage leaves. But if the gang is waiting someplace and see you in that mask, Gunner might realize who you are. I'll disguise myself as a Mexican. Then I'll not need my mask. A Mexican and an Indian traveling along the trail wouldn't cause suspicion. We'll keep our eyes open, and if a gang is waiting, we'll find out. That night, the masked man and Indian camped on the outskirts of town. The following morning, the Lone Ranger carefully disguised himself as a Mexican. Then the two men rode the trail westward at a leisurely pace. As they followed the trail across the unfenced cotton fields, Toto pointed to the workers bending over the cotton plants close by. That plenty hot work and sun. Yes, Toto. The wide-brimmed hats protect them to a certain extent. Those peons can stand the heat and are fast workers in the cotton fields. Stage be plenty safe along here, and no place for ambush. I'm sure the stage will get through safely. Come on, Silver. Come, Scout. The Lone Ranger and Tonto carefully scouted both sides of the trail through the foothills without result. Later, at the outskirts of the next town, they started back, and just as carefully looked for signs of a gang. About two hours later, they rode back along the trail through the cotton fields. The Lone Ranger glanced at the workers they were passing. Suddenly, he spoke to Toto in a low voice. Toto, I just noticed something. Ah? Uh, what that, Kimofabi? Those peons. They've made little or no progress since we passed a couple of hours ago. Oh, that right. In the same places. We'll stop, Toto. Who's it with Who's got over there? closest to us is looking this way. I'll get him to come over here, then I'll ask him in Spanish if this is the road to Lime Rock. Not a good idea. All right, let's just mount easy, steady, big fellow. Senor, senor, would you come here, please, for a moment? Just stand. Look. Senor, please. I'm coming now. What do you want? Is the El Camino a Lime Rock? Huh? Comprende usted? You not savvy. In your language, senor, I said, do you understand me? I first ask you if this is the road to Lime Rock. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, si, si, si. You do not understand Spanish, amigo. You are not a Mexican pale. Wise hombre, eh? Well, I'll... Wait. No need for the gun, senor. 
I can be of great service to you uh, for a price. What do you mean? If all of you leave, the boss will know I pull the double cross, no? Hey, I don't savvy. You work on this plantation. You mentioned the bosses, though. It is not wise for me to say, senor. But there is danger. You can escape it and get plenty of cash besides. But I cannot talk further here. The others are watching. Hey, what's this all about? We we'll ride over the rise, John, and stop at the cotton baling shack that stands in the field to the left of the trail. If you can get away alone, come there, and I'll tell you what I overheard the boss saying. Make an excuse to the others. It is for your safety, senor, and for your profit and mine. He's gone now. Not yet. I, uh, I'll come to the baling shack. Bueno. I'll be seeing you. You think he's going to come to shack, Kimasami? Well, I hope so, Tonto. In fact, my worry is that he'll decide to tell the others what I said. In that case, they'll all come here, and we'll be trapped. We'll continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. All over the country, in every direction, how you, how you doing is the question. And here's one the happy, happy people have to say. Eating our Wheaties, and we do, 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 and okay. Okay. Right, that's something champions know everywhere, wherever you go. Take Par Bust and Sammy Sneed. Born in old Virginia, Slammin' Sam has been up on top for years and eaten his Wheaties regularly. And Al Rosen, born in sunny South Carolina, clutch hitter with the Cleveland Indians. There's Al at the plate. Here's a pitch. Another solid sock for a solid champ. And say Al Rosen's been eating Wheaties for 23 baseball seasons. That's the way it goes. South, North, East, West, Wheaties. Why, there's a whole kernel of wheat in every Wheaties flake. Keep on eating your Wheaties and you'll be do, 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 and okay. Okay. Now to continue. After waiting at the bailing shack a short time, the Lone Ranger and Toto heard hoofbeats approaching. He here, one horse. Man, come alone. So far, things are working our way. A moment later, the outlaw rode into view and stopped behind the shack. Oh, hi, oh. Easy. I got you and the Indian covered, mister. Till I find out what's on your mind. The gun is not necessary, senor. That remains to be seen. Now start talking. What's this all about? You did not tell the others you were coming here? No. I got curious about what you said. I told them I was going to go see that the horses were all right. Now get to the point. But of course, senor. As he spoke, the Lone Ranger gestured with his hand. The great horse Silver, recognizing the signal, began snorting and stopping a short distance behind the outlaw. Caramba, that stallion. I must call him before he runs away. Hold up, hold up. The Lone Ranger stepped hurriedly past the outlaw as if to go to Silver. Then, lightning fast, the masked man grabbed the outlaw's gun I arm and twisted. No. Drop the gun. Drop it. Oh, my arm. Let go. Take a gun. Let me cover him. You tricked me. In the way you talk, you aren't Mexican either. No. That's right. Who no. are you? Now, talk and talk fast if you want to live. I'm Lefty Baker. There they go. You're breaking my arm. Why are you and those other men waiting in the cotton field disguised as workers? I'm not telling anything. No, no wait, wait. Tell the truth. Talk. All right, all right. But stop twisting my arm, will you? Gunner Mason. We're working for him. Waiting for the stage. Where's Gunner? Waiting at the house for the hombre who runs the plantation. Better join the gang just before the stage goes by. Oh, come on. Let go my arm, mister. Uh, keep him covered, Toto. <laughs> I'll tie him to his horse. They will take him with us to the sheriff. Uh -huh. Old Ranger and Toto took a back trail into town and turned lefty over to the sheriff. The masked man told what he had learned. Then the sheriff said, The stage isn't due to leave for a couple of hours. I'll take a posse and go out there to round up those phony workers. If you do that, sheriff, you won't get Gunner Mason. Hmm. You got a better idea, mister? Yes. I suggest we take some men and go to the plantation house right away. 
We can surprise Gunner and the man with him and take them prisoners. Good idea. Keep the convicted men from knowing of the capture, if possible. Sure, that'll be easy. Then we'll ride to the cotton fields bordering the trail. Move in on the five other outlaws who are waiting there in disguise. Good. We'll get them all. Two men will be enough to leave here with the prisoners, as long as we know where Gunner and his men are. I'll take all the other deputies with us. All right, let's go. All right. Unknown to the Lone Ranger and Tonto, one of the other outlaw workers had become suspicious when Lefty went to see about the horses. He followed Lefty and arrived on top of the rise in time to see him riding away from the bailing shack with the Lone Ranger and Tonto. Noting that Lefty was tied to his horse, the man hurried back and told the others. Later, Gunner and Sandy were surprised when the five men drew rein in front of the house. Who's coming, Gunner? Yeah, look through the window. The men we had planted in disguises are here. I thunder, I told them to see... Hey, what's the idea? Why did you... Oh, boss, we got news. Well, speak up. What is it, Slug? Two hombres rode by. They stopped and talked to Lefty. After they went on, Lefty said he was going to check on the horses we left ground hitched among the trees. I got suspicious and followed. I saw Lefty tied to his horse, leaving with the two hombres, heading for town. Holy mackerel, what they look like? One was a Mexican riding a big white stallion. The other was an Indian on a pin. Mexican? Jumping catfish. What's the matter? One who looked like a Mexican must be a certain hombre in disguise who helps the law. Oh, I've heard of a masked man on an engine. He ride a big white stallion on a paint. He's called the Lone Ranger. Oh, right. If they're the two hombres I think they are, they'll get the truth out of Lefty. He's the weakest one of the gang. He'll tell them where I am and all about our plan. Hey, maybe they'll bring the sheriff and posse here, Gunner. That's exactly what I think they'll do. What are we going to do now? Yeah, let me think a minute. That masked man would be smart enough to try to capture me first. That means they'd come here before they went to the fields to pick up you men. Sandy, I'll still do what I started out to do. We'll take the back trail to town. It's longer, but we don't want to run into the posse coming here. But why go to town? Listen. The sheriff will think he's got us in the bag. He'll bring every available man with him, leaving the jail with only one or two deputies to guard it. We'll go there and get Lefty and the other three men out. Too risky. All right, you men, get out of those pan outfits and into your own. I'll give you five minutes. All right. Sandy, I'll take the cash from the safe and store it in my saddlebags. Come on, we'll be ready to leave by the time the men change. All right. A short time after Gunner and his men had left on the longer back trail to town, the Lone Ranger and Tonto with the posse, after dismounting among the trees nearby, moved through the brush toward the house with drawn guns. A careful and cautious investigation soon proved there was no one on the premises. The sheriff and the Lone Ranger entered the house. In a back room, the masked man pointed and spoke. Look, five large brim straw pay on hats, five pay on outfits. Uh -huh. What do you make of it? There were five other men in the cotton fields in disguises like those. But what do they... This may indicate those men came back here to the house and changed clothes. He must have it. What is it, Toto? They find fresh tracks of horses, maybe six, seven, yeah. and then go from back a house along other trail to town. Sheriff, I think Gunnar Mason outsmarted us. He and his gang must be taking the back trail to town to effect a jailbreak for the four prisoners. Great day. That trail is longer than the main one. With hard riding, we may get to town in time. Come on, let's hurry. Later in town, the deputy in charge was speaking to the guard who'd been left at the jail with him. Yeah, from the looks of things, our worries are over about taking those three prisoners to territorial. By tonight, this jail will be filled with Gunner and the rest of his gang. Yeah, the Gunner's going to be mighty surprised when that posse moves in on him. Those men posing as cotton pickers will be in for a surprise too. All right, reach huh? for him. Hey, men with guns. Stop it. No. You want to lift, deputy? Drop your gun. No, I... Four of my men in the back doorway. Yeah, all right. There's my gun. Come on in, boys. All right, Gunner. <laughs> well, this was easy. Keep them covered. I'll get the keys to the cells. Gunner stepped through the doorway at the back of the sheriff's office, which led to the cells. 
The outside door at the rear end of the corridor was open, and the waiting horses were visible beyond. Gunner stopped in front of Lefty's cell first. Hello, Lefty. Hey, Gunner, you brought the gang to break us out. I brought the gang to get the men out who knew enough to keep their mouths shut, Lefty. Well, now listen, Gunner, I had a talk. A tall hombre posing as a Mexican. He shot me to... Squealer. Gunner, get us out of here. We knew he'd come, Gunner. He with you men in a minute. I got something to settle first. I got to put a bullet in a polecat. No. No, Gunner, please. Leave me here if you want to, but don't shoot me. Look, I... You're the crew, Lefty. This is it. Hold it. Down. Ow! Hey, hey, it's my man. Shoot! Out this way. We'll soon be... Gunner, you're hurt. Hey, keep going. Hurry. There we are and got those guns. Lawman, outside the back door. We're trapped. Fight! Fight your way out. I'll follow. Oh. The sheriff's men moved in from the front and back, trapping the outlaws inside. Several were wounded, and the rest, realizing they didn't have a chance, quickly surrendered. Later, after the wounded had been cared for and the outlaws were behind bars, the sheriff spoke to his deputies in his office. Man, you did a fine job. We've got the entire Gunner Mason gang behind bars, including Mason himself. And we found the cash from the last stage hold up in Mason's saddlebag. I sure thought Gunner was going to put one over on you, Sheriff. He and his men came busting in here like they did. Well, yeah, he's not as smart as he thought he was. Those three convicted prisoners will go on the stage as we planned. Gunner and the others will soon follow him to Territorial. For a while, I thought Gunner had outsmarted the Lone Ranger by having him take you on a wild goose chase. Sure, oh, that way. Sure. Sam, if it hadn't been for him and Tonto, no telling what would have happened. Being human like the rest of us, some of his plans may go astray once in a while. But let me tell you, to my way of thinking, there isn't a man in the entire West who can outsmart the Lone Ranger. copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated is produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Foy. Listen to the Lone Ranger brought to you by special recording Mondays through Fridays at this same time.